With iPad OS 26, the iPad got a brand new look, and Apple made the iPad much more computer-like. So I tried the iPad OS 26 beta to see if, hey, maybe the iPad really is a computer now. So let's talk about what's new and if these new features actually do make your iPad into a more multitasking friendly, power user oriented machine. Let's start. The UI design has changed dramatically, making it feel as if Apple saw Windows Vista and wanted it to be 2005 again. I'm not complaining because I actually loved how Windows Vista looked and I'm glad transparent glass is a tech trend again. It's gone full circle, but for the most part, while all the UI elements are now transparent, they behave very similarly to how they behaved before, just shinier and reflectier, Re reflector? more reflective. I had no problem adjusting to this new look and the slight changes to all of the buttons. So instead of focusing on the shiny new UI, let's look at what's actually new and would impact you from a user perspective. At a high level, there's an improved files app, the new menu bar, and better windows management. I know, right? It feels like Apple is finally making the iPad computer-like in the right ways. I truly believe that the iPad can already be the main computer for a lot of normal everyday people. And with this update, I don't think it changes that fact very much. If anything, it makes a lot of the things that people could already do on the iPad a lot easier to do. The biggest complaints that I've personally had with using the iPad as a laptop replacement before iPad OS 26 are how quickly you can complete different tasks, the iPad mainly had cut down versions of desktop apps, the file management needed to get better, and the usability of accessories was just okay. And while this update isn't perfect, it doesn't address all of those things, it does a pretty good job at addressing most of those things. So. Let's break it down. The iPad has a real cursor icon. So before, if you were using a touchpad or a mouse, as you approach objects, the cursor would kind of get pulled in by the gravity of the object it's closest to. Now it's a full blown mouse, which means you get full control of where the cursor lands. But in defense of the old method, it did feel like I got to my desired object a lot easier. It was like having the gutter bumpers up while you're bowling. Besides that, apps are dedicated windows now, meaning you can resize them in any shape or form or quickly adjust the size with these Mac-esque window management buttons. This is great. It makes it feel like the iPad is now a desk surface when you have a bunch of different apps open. You might also think, hey, Jimmy, having that many app windows open on this tiny screen is bad, but most of the apps do a good job at adjusting to whatever size windows it's in. It does feel kind of cramped though. I still wouldn't primarily use this this way on just the iPad screen, but it's useful if you do need it. This applies to when it's connected to external monitors too. And this is where it really shines. It makes the monitor space feel much bigger than it actually is because the windows can contain more content per inch in these confined little windows compared to something like a Windows PC or a Mac. Okay, let's Let's just say you don't care about any of these productivity focus features, all the multitasking type features for whatever reason. If you want to use your iPad just like how it's always been, just one app taking up the entire screen, then these windows management features are just tucked away hidden at the top of the screen away from view. You only use them if you absolutely want to. But I think if you've grown up with a Mac or a PC, this windows management would feel very, very familiar. It's kind of like all those live action remakes of movies that's been coming out recently. Why do they keep doing that? Nobody asked for those. Okay, so just because the iPad has gained a ton of desktop-like functionality doesn't change the fact that it's still a great giant tablet for drawing or taking notes. And if you're looking to further enhance that aspect of it, well, you might wanna check out today's sponsor, Paperlike. The Paperlike 2.1 takes the glass screen of any recent model iPad and turns it into something that feels much more natural and tactile to write or draw on. It's almost paper-like. I'm guessing that pun was intended. And trying it out for a bit now, it definitely feels that way. It was easy to put on and gives your screen a more matte look and protects it from any scratches or scuffs too. In fact, it's been on my iPad throughout this entire video and you may not have noticed it because it's just there. The Apple Pencil comfortably glides across the surface while at the same time provides you a tactile feel that you just can't get on a plain regular iPad without one. Let's be real here. Some of us might not like a more matte anti-glare look or maybe the texture just isn't for you. So if you're unhappy with the paper-like screen protector, they provide a 100 day satisfaction guarantee, giving you plenty of time to determine if you made the right decision for yourself. So if you're interested in paper-like and their 2.1 screen protector, check out the link in the video description below. To make the iPad feel even more like macOS, Apple added a menu bar when an app is opened. It functions very similarly to macOS, providing all the different actions you can take in the app, provides a quick way to get to the app settings as well, and it doesn't take up too much space and disappears when your mouse isn't near the top of the screen. If you're using just a touchscreen, you can still pull the menu bar down by doing a mini swipe down from the top. But I will say, most apps have the most generic functions that you'd probably never really need to use hidden in these menu bars, like text formatting options in Google Maps. 
What? That, that was the only option in Google Maps besides Windows management. Obviously, this feature, as you can see with our Google Maps example, will depend deeply on how app developers leverage it. So how useful this menu bar really is, is going to be on an app to app basis and going to take some time too. But when it's implemented well, it does make doing some annoying tasks on the iPad a lot easier. I'll also say that this feature is a nice win because it's there when you need it and it's away from the screen when you don't. So the Files app, an area that needed the most improvement, got a massive update too. But now you can sort and adjust how you view files and folders, label those folders different colors, put shortcuts to folders on the iPad's dock to quickly access its content from any screen, and you have any tasks that take up a significant amount of time requiring you to keep the app open, you can actually run it in the background so you no longer have to baby it the entire time. Drag and drop also gets a lot easier because now you can literally just have a little files window open and just drag files files directly to whatever you're working on. And you can do the same from the dock too. And you can control the default app for different file types. I feel like a broken record saying this, but this feels very Mac OS. Okay, so those are the main new features of iPad OS 26, at least the ones that would probably impact how you work with a thing. But how has that translated to real world usage? I wanna point out that this was on the developer beta. So I'm excusing some of the random weird glitches when the official release drops, things might be slightly different and we can talk about that in a different video. My opinions may shift completely depending on how that goes. But for the last nine years, Apple has been spoon feeding us and teasing us with these tiny, tiny, little bite-sized updates that have us all thinking maybe just maybe this is the year that the iPad can replace my computer and the OS has slowly and slowly gotten better because of it I think as it is now in iPad OS 26 these updates are major compared to previous years even if it feels more like quality of life features that enhances existing functionality rather than adding a ton of new features it's at a point where it's pretty close to what Apple can do on their end to the OS without basically turning the iPad into a MacBook which they're still trying to avoid realistically besides things like plugins and some more user control of the iPad and its connected devices, maybe even multiple user profiles or more ports. I'm not saying that iPad OS is perfect. It could definitely use some additional refinement, but it is not the largest bottleneck anymore. Now it's down to the apps you use every single day and if those apps can actually do everything you need it to do from the iPad. The hardware is there. I mean, the iPad Pro shares the same chip as the MacBook Air and Mac Mini, and those are fantastic machines that run Mac OS. And for each person, what apps and their functions are needed will be completely different. So if you're a casual user, the iPad has already been a decent computer replacement for you for a few years now. You'll be fine. I've noticed this about people in my own life, and you might too. They just don't even bother owning a laptop anymore. Like realistically, a lot of things are just cloud-based now to the point that the OS you're running on just feels like it matters less and less every single year. And for power users, I mean, this update makes multitasking on the iPad better. So I feel like this is an absolute win for everyone from the general user perspective and from the power users. So what impact does iPad OS 26 have on the iPad? Well, it feels like the macification of the iPad in both a very positive and negative way. You get a lot of very user-friendly features added in this update. And it makes the UI look and feel like an interesting blend between iOS and macOS now, which I guess was the intention of iPad OS in the first place. And for the most part, the new functions don't impede on current iPad users who really only use their iPads as, well, giant glorified iPhones. But because it's becoming so mac light, I think this has an impact on, well, the Mac. I think it's pretty clear what I'm getting at here. Historically, Apple seems like they didn't want the iPad to replace their Mac because they believed making the iPad more Mac-like would cannibalize Mac sales. But with this update, it feels like something has shifted. It now feels like Apple wants this iPad to be your primary computer and they want the Mac to be a specialty machine a tool if you only need the extra power and versatility, like a screwdriver versus a power drill. I think the iPad now, with these more Mac-like functions, is quickly encroaching on the Mac, and it's already better for the average person, which I know isn't the type of people who watch this video, but just think about your mom, dad, your brother, your sister, your aunties, your uncles, everyone that you know that isn't very tech savvy. The iPad is gonna feel like their iPhone, and that means they basically already know how to use it because they know how to use an iPhone. And there's a whole generation of kids who grew up with nothing but iPads as their main device. The usage of Macs will probably eventually shrink to people who just want a billion ports to plug in more things and you have fingers to tinker with stuff or to run applications that you just can't run on an iPad. Because I'm gonna be real here, if I didn't video edit on a Mac, I think it'd be very easy to switch over to the iPad and it's just 
more appealing to a casual user now. The iPad is just more user-friendly and versatile, but this update also takes existing macOS features and puts them in a package that everyday people already understand, the iPad. So if anything, it makes it easier for the type of people that only use an iPad to familiarize themselves with how macOS works too, further enticing them to eventually get a Mac if they become more of a power user. Basically, the iPhone is a gateway device for the iPad and an iPad becomes a gateway device for the MacBook. I think that's their intention here. So I don't know if it outright replaces a laptop or desktop PC in the minds of a regular person, but it does do a lot of jobs that we'd expect that computers do do. While the Mac itself still has many use cases, albeit a smaller use case for power users. So yeah, that's my thoughts on this new iPad OS 26 update. It's a great update that freshens up the UI, enhances the iPad's productivity capabilities, and it very much blurs the line between iPad OS and Mac OS even further. It's one of the better updates released on the iPad for sure, but you know, I'm curious about what you think. Does the iPad becoming more Mac OS like make you want to use your Mac less or does it make using an iPad feel more complex than it needs to be? Have there actually been app updates to the iPad that puts it on par with what you'd expect out of an actual Mac or PC? Where does this Mac stand after all this? I'll probably do a, I switched from a MacBook to iPad type video again someday in the near future probably, <laughs> once it officially drops. I'm curious to see if people feel any differently than I do about this. And please let me know if there's anything specific that I need to try. Leave it all down in the description below and I'll see you all next time.